During the summer of 2023, we moved to a remote Scottish Hebridean island to be its only two residents along with our two pet sheep and pair of cats. These remote islands seem to retain an old-fashioned rhythm and a charm which we find encouraging us to live a more frugal and simple life, the way man was perhaps more intended to. We have an ancient stone cottage to restore, veggies to grow, livestock to build up, fish to catch and smoke, a boat to buy, and much more. Step back in time with us at the Scottish Isle. We've never had this much water pouring off the hill. This is the burn which turns into this small waterfall which feeds the tanks. I'm just going to have to go up there and check to make sure that the pipe is still in place. But that's a mad amount of water. How could anybody run out of water on this island? So as you know from a previous episode where you saw Katie working on the, the irrigation here, this is the point where our water pipes collect the uh, running burn water. You see the pipe in there and then off it goes down the hill. Now what's happening is at this moment in time one of the tanks, well the tanks are not filling. They're full but they're not refilling. So one of these pipes and I'm going to assume it's that one there that shouldn't be there is not doing the business. Or that one here, that's under here, has all clogged up. So these kind of things are just an ongoing job. You have to constantly keep on top of them. And this is such a torrent at the moment. I've never seen it like this, ever. I mean, when we came up here to solve this problem, that was a trickle under there. <laughs> Anyway, this needs resolving, so I'll get on with it. <laughs> well, that was funny. That bit of pipe that was down there was just that. So I don't think uh, that's got anything to do with anything. I'm waiting for Katie to come up here because she moved the second pipe. And I don't know where it is. So until she's here, this can't really be resolved. But that's not going to do anything. Every day's an adventure on the Scottish Isle. Most other people on a wet and windy Saturday morning are sat probably, you know, with a feet up. Cup of tea, having a biscuit. It's blocked. It's blocked. So we've got to pull this pipe out. Just pull it out. We'll just have to take it out and check it. Do you want me to do this? Here, do you want me? I'll, I'll do it. Let me do it.
got a bit of cooking to do. I didn't want to waste them. Such a beautiful harvest. These are good cooking apples. Um, right, so these are going to be, well, apple butter. I need four pounds for apple butter. And oh, look at this little blighter. Grr. Four pounds, apple butter. Really easy to make. Traditionally quite tart, not, not too sugary, so not too bad for you. Um, you leave the, the cores in and the skins on, so it's super easy. The skins are really good for flavour and the cores help with the pectin content to set the butter. But that's all I need for a batch of that. So this, this lot is just going to be apple pie and apple crumble filling. Better get cooking. It's my nan, my Irish nan's old soup pot. Apparently she was a terrible cook. Anyway, uh, right, apple pie filling. Citrus fruit's going in here so that the fruit doesn't brown while I am peeling and coring it, cutting out the bad bits. And that's just for washing off any slugs or whatever we find. So I'm gonna go and put something on the radio and get slicing. Four pounds of apples with two cups of water and a wee bit more for good measure. Cover it. I'm not bothered about them oxidising because it's going to end up being a very dark brown colour anyway. That'll do. Bring to the boil then, simmer for, well, as long as it takes. Just going to take you for a walk down this trench to show what we're up against. Uh, it's worth noting that we've had five days of continuous rain, and I mean continuous. It has not stopped, maybe for like 10 minutes. But um, this goes to show the, the, reten the water retention problem that we're having on this trench itself. Now, that piece of plastic there is wrapped around the pipe that is coming from the tanks, the water tanks. All this debris has to come out, including these rocks, and that one there is huge. So that's going to be a joy. But at the moment, round here, it is like Borneo. It's like some jungle out in the Far East. So look, all this, all this retention here, it's all sitting on the natural bedrock, but debris has been allowed to pile up here over the last God knows how long. All of this foliage here needs cutting back and these rocks exposing. So we can see where any leaks are coming out of these rocks. Um, major issue that we found here, this is the biggest problem here, around here. And like I just saying, the major issue is, now you can hear the, the, uh, the waterfall there. There's our water collection tanks. And the water that's coming off this waterfall further up the hill is going through the soil. It's coming straight down here and it's coming out here and this is all accumulating here and then basically running down like it's a little stream and this here is the corner back corner of the bedroom and it was this that the contractor was supposed to be this week resolving We came down here to do some nice stuff to finish blackening up the stove and seal it with some rope uh, and install the pipe before the glass arrives this week. Um, I had to cut the flue liner off first and we've literally got none of the right tools for the job. So I ended up just kind of poking holes in it till I got a purchase on it and then peeled it back like a 
tin of corned beef. Anyway, it's done now. Now we can get on to doing the prettifying. Don't have much of this stuff left. We didn't bring too much with us, so I'm going to have to be a bit economical with it. Should be enough to do the whole stove though. We are currently waiting for an industrial vacuum cleaner to arrive. Uh, so that we can finish taking all of the uh, loose dust off the walls because after our last cleanup we decided <laughs> we're not doing that again. these holes up with cement because this was a vent with a handle here and it's completely rusted shut. There's no way for us to get this working again or attach a new handle, not with what we have. So just using some fire cement in these holes because when we tried it out there was smoke coming out of these holes. So it would be useful to have it as a vent but it's not happening. So they're getting plugged. We had a very high tide again last night. All of this area is completely covered by the sea and it's always worth coming and checking to see what the uh, the tide has brought us and I just found this. It's a very old piece of chain. So I can so I cast iron chain, sorry, wrought iron chain, and uh, I haven't picked it up yet to see how heavy it is, but it's incredible to think that the tide has washed that up over here. Let's pick it up and see how heavy it is. Yeah, very heavy. It's quite encrusted there, but it's, that's quite cool. Now, what can we do with that? Katie, you having your lunch? Yes. Come and have a look at what I found. Never had a moment's peace. Oh. Pick that up. 
Oh, hello. Yeah, but just you know, you're eating with one hand. You can just pick pick it up with the other. You bring home the nicest gifts. Well, shiver me timbers. It's uh, it's very heavy, that isn't it? I'd say that's like 40, 50 kilograms. I struggled dragging it up here. So why did you? It's what I said you'd say. Well, I mean, I don't know, but do they still still use like? old scabby bits of chain. Well, raw iron. I mean, obviously that's been made by somebody. It's that's probably quite old. <clears throat> it's it's a nice decorative piece. It, uh, how are we going to display it? Uh, just a pile like that, I guess. Somewhere. Just leave it. That, well, the thing is, you know me. That's probably where it'll lie for a good couple of days. Scott tends to dig things up, like broken old wee bits of scabby pottery and. Uh, Bring them home. It's the them. Indiana Jones in me. Bring, he brings them home and puts them in a jar. And they stay in the jar somewhere unsightly for a really long period of time until he forgets that they're there and I put them in the bin. Hang on. We need evidence. Should see a jar there with my bits of pottery in it. So that resolved the issue. This pipe here was uh, blocked slightly, but it's now filling up like you wouldn't imagine. You resolve one issue, you create another. Here's another example of the drainage issues we have running from the hill. All that water that's pouring out there from that root system, dropping down there. And it's this source, which is then connecting up with the trench at the back of the house. This is a beast. What's all that stuff from? There's concrete there and stone. Out of this trench, it was all here. Uh, I would assume that some of the stone uh, has pro probably fallen from the side. There's a big stone down there that's uh, protecting the, the inlet pipe coming from the tanks. Uh, but the rest of it is just debris that's in here. But I'm afraid that... You know what you can do with these? What? How much did these cost? 25 quid. You are joking. They're for grass, um, they're not for, you know... Don't buy bulldog shears. It's the, the reverse of product placement, that wasn't it? They're just not cutting anything. I think it might be your technique. I just got a mouthful of mud then. All sorts back here. 
brambles, oak tree saplings, all the flora and fauna of the island is growing in this trench. I tell you, the fern loves it. I mean, the amount of fern roots that I'm pulling out of here is just mad. Yeah, you've got to get them by the root as well because... They're just going to go back in there. Yeah, same with the brambles. Well, that jet wash is going to do its business when we, uh, when we get it going. Can't get that root ball out. Some uh, watercressy stuff growing down there. It's bloody oak. Yeah. <laughs> Eat, maybe it's hemlock. Eat it, Scott. No. And we'll find out. No. Who did right. that? What, who ate hemlock? It yeah. was, they gave it to uh, Socrates, didn't they? Told him it was a lovely cress sandwich, egg no, and cress no. sandwich, and it was. No, he was, he was sentenced to death for corrupting the youth. Death by. Yeah, they made him drink it. Oh. I'm sure it was hemlock. I know somebody will tell me I'm wrong if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Can you whistle, please? People normally whistle when they're. I never hear men whistling anymore when they're on the job. <laughs> it's very jaunty. <laughs> I think I'm going mad. We need uh, sheep traffic lights. There's a sheep jam on the steps. I think she needs you to move out of the way, Crowdy. <laughs> Tell her, Brie. Tell her to get out of the way. Right, this pile of mush needs to put through a food mill. I don't have a food mill. But I've got a sieve and this lovely old Victorian beater. They, uh, they would have used this for tenderising meat, for breaking up herbs, salt, sugar, everything. Um, nice old thing with a bend in the middle it's been used so much uh right so here we go You can add whatever spices you want to this and however much sugar you want but I've just tasted that pulp and it's utterly delicious as it is. So given the fact that those flavours are just going to intensify the longer we cook it which is what we do next, cook it down into a thick sort of syrupy paste the thing. I'm not going to add anything much to it at this point. I can always add stuff later. So, ground cloves, some ginger and some cinnamon for me. I'm just going to add these uh, like they are because I want to be able to pick them out again later. Um, a little bit of allspice. And a wee bit of salt. And that's going back on the boil, well, the simmer for a couple of hours, stirring constantly, um, just for however long it takes for it to become lovely and dark and brown and thick. 
and spreadable consistency. Here, we've got a drainage outlet pipe, which is supposed to be taking all this water. And it's not doing a thing. And it's not doing anything. This one here is taking water off the hill, and these are new. So we're going to think that these were put in here sometime in the last seven years. Uh, but as you see, this is dripping out and dripping straight into the trench. Now, just so you know how bad this is, yeah, focus on my feet when I walk through it. You ready? My, my foot in there, that I mean, that water, Keep I keep trying to get that water out and it keeps coming back. So we've got yet more issues with water coming from under here somewhere and filling up this, this particular trench. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, if you want to walk along the top here. Well, you've made good work of it. Well, I mean, this is taking like most of the day, but at least now we can see what we're actually dealing with to a degree. Um, we were speaking just the other night that in an ideal world, you would just extend the roof and cover the trench. But we found out with the massive rainfall the other day that actually it make no difference. It, it just comes out of the bank. Yeah, it just come. It would you'd extend this over this trench, uh, and then all the rain would fall down here, and then it would just come all the way through and all the way back. So there's just no point in extending the roof. There, there is no permanent solution to this. I mean, most people watching. This has to be the worst drainage issue you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, the wall there is completely collapsed. Uh, there's hardly any stone in that section whatsoever. And then it comes back here and then goes all the way down the trench to the very end. So this, this needs rebuilding or at least, you know, sawing out in some way. Um, there's, there, I can show you more when we get over to the, uh, the far end of like how, how good this wall actually still is in parts. But this, all this mud, all this, all this has got to come out. And the only way that's coming out is with the pressure hose because you can't, um, you can't do it with a shovel because of the, the stone underneath. Now here. That's the bit I was digging initially. Yeah, and, and that's, that's this, it does this, and it drains off either side of the hat. So this is the, this is the, the highest point. And all this skirt that's been put on it is concrete. And that concrete used to go all the way along. Now the concrete is obviously just retaining all the moisture that's building up. And that's why we get this discoloration. Why it comes into the house. Yeah, and that's ingress. why. So the thing is, when you look at, 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 at these puddles, and we'll, down there is even worse. But if you, if you look at these, you can see why we've got the problem that we have in the living room and in the bedroom when it comes to removing the floors because i mean just look at it, 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 it like i said this has to be it's certainly the worst drainage problem that i've ever seen in my life and it's just neglect isn't it yeah it's just because people haven't been keeping on top of it when when this is all cleaned out and it's finished it's going to look amazing but it's got, right now it looks like we're in a battle of the song but if you um as you're coming down here and obviously the, it, the gradient it's lower and lower so the water can run off it we've had a massive collapse here of the wall and this huge stone here it's not going anywhere but it, it, it's you know i mean how we we are not going to be able to lift that to prop that up so you're gonna to have to get some i don't know acro pops or something underneath it to prop it up so we can get some more stone underneath it now here the wall is absolutely <coughs> sound but Ironically, this is where the water's all coming out. So all this here, can you see that trickle of water yeah. there? It's like a burn. All that is coming out of this point. That's coming out from here. Coming out of here. Um, and there's no way we can move this down to, well, we can do it, but it's just, it's just an, an enormous job because it needs some kind of drainage pipe. But as I said earlier on, all this water, you just want to focus on the, that little waterfall there, that's filling the tanks up there. The water is coming down behind the tanks, going underneath this concrete plinth, coming down here and pouring into here. And it is literally pouring into here. That's why you've got this happening. Well, like I said, at least now we can see what we're dealing with. 
and then uh, you know the next phase to this is as soon as we get the connectors for the uh, the power wash is to clean all of this dirt out every bit of it so and what's underneath this we're hoping is an actual bedrock because it feels like it to me and this is the reason why you can't shovel this dirt out because it's hitting stone all the time and the stone's all jagged so clean all jet jet clean out this jet wash this all out and then we're going to get a, a really good idea of what we need to do there's only one stage left to go with this now before we can light it and get it roaring in the living room and that is to install the rope seal on the door and also to install the glass which is going to arrive any day now I hope. In order to do that I have to lay the stove on its side so there's no point installing the pipe at the minute. Um, the reason I have to do that is because I can't get the door off so um, it needs to lay flat in order for everything to seal properly. But there we go, still drying, but I think you'll agree, a marked improvement. It needs babysitting this. You need to, um, you need to be here to stir it so it doesn't catch on the bottom. It smells amazing in here. I wish you could smell it. Here's my apple pie filling. I'm going to freeze this in batches and then just defrost it before I want to make a pie next. Is this for me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All of it? Well, not all of it. Why, are you having some? Yeah. Oh. Are you sure you want... Yeah, I don't think you like apple crumble, do you? Okay, she does. I made a mess. Oh, yeah, you're jealous. <laughs>